What made two-time Golden Globe-winning actress Kim Novak give up acting at the age of 58? Known for her role in the classic psychological film Vertigo, Kim Novak easily became a female Hollywood icon in the 50s. As a great artist, a mental health activist, and an anti-bullying campaigner, Kim Novak has become the pride of many audiences. However, a tragedy caused Kim Novak to make the bold decision to give up her career, and now she is 90 years old, with many amazing changes. If you're curious about Kim Novak's life, don't miss this video because there will be quite a few things that will make your jaw drop. Kim Novak, an iconic Hollywood figure who recently celebrated her 90th birthday, is far more than just a legendary actress from the golden age of cinema. Her illustrious career, marked by her role in Alfred Hitchcock's classic film, Vertigo, only scratches the surface of her multifaceted persona. Novak's life is a testament to her artistic talent, mental health advocacy, commitment to anti-bullying initiatives, and dedication to helping animals as a vet's assistant. But perhaps most strikingly, she is a remarkable force of life, displaying resilience even in the face of personal loss. Just a few months ago, Novak experienced the heart-wrenching loss of her second husband, Bob Malloy. Despite the profound grief that undoubtedly accompanied his passing, Kim Novak's indomitable spirit keeps her moving forward. She has turned to her art a source of solace and expression throughout her life to navigate the depths of her emotions, much as she has done in the past during difficult times. Interestingly, Kim Novak once turned down a substantial offer of more than one million to write her autobiography several decades ago. However, she has chosen a different path to share her life experiences and emotions. She is now preparing to publish a visually stunning book showcasing her art, which is dedicated to her late husband, Bob Malloy. In this intimate and artistic endeavor, Novak offers readers a glimpse into her life through a few carefully chosen words that hint at significant events, rather than dissecting them. Within the pages of her forthcoming book, Novak's art takes center stage. The collection features tender portraits capturing the essence of her parents, as well as a myriad of animals she has cared for and sheltered over the years, perhaps a reflection of Malloy's background as an equine vet. Her artistic talents extend into the realm of surrealism, as evidenced by her captivating landscapes, where creatures seamlessly merge with the expansive skies. These dreamlike creations transport viewers to whimsical worlds where anthropomorphized trees sway gracefully from branch to branch, evoking a sense of wonder and enchantment. Kim Novak's journey in Hollywood began when she was just 21 years old, embarking on what would become a storied career. Her first credited Hollywood role came in the 1954 film Noir Pushover, where she acted opposite the veteran actor Fred McMurray, who was significantly older, a quarter of a century her senior. With a twinkle in her eye, Novak fondly recalls a humorous anecdote from her time on set. She couldn't help but chuckle as she reminisced about an unintentional faux pas. She vividly remembered the moment when McMurray opened his trench coat on set, revealing a garment that had been made the very year she was born. She had blurted out, Oh my God, that coat was made the year I was born. Reflecting on her youthful innocence, she admitted to feeling a tad foolish in that instant. Nevertheless, it was a testament to her unique perspective on people. Kim Novak didn't perceive individuals based on their age, but rather saw them for who they truly were. Just a year later, in 1955, Kim Novak found herself in the Oscar-winning film Picnic. She played Madge, a young and impressionable girl who finds herself falling in love with William Holden's character, an older and unemployed drifter. This role showcased her ability to convey the complexities of love and desire, transcending the boundaries of age. However, it was at the age of 25 that Kim Novak achieved her cinematic breakthrough, cementing her place in Hollywood history with her dual roles in Alfred Hitchcock's masterpiece, Vertigo. In the film, she portrayed two characters that would define her Hollywood career, the enigmatic and alluring Madeline Elster and the down-to-earth shop assistant Judy Barton. 
The plot revolves around James Stewart's character, Scotty, a retired detective who falls passionately in love with Madeline. As the story unfolds, Scotty becomes obsessed and attempts to transform Judy into a replica of Madeline. The poignant revelation of the film lies in the realization that Scotty's love is an illusion for a woman who, in truth, does not exist. Kim Novak, whose birth name was Marilyn Pauline Novak, came into the world in the vibrant city of Chicago. She was born to Czech parents who were known for their stern and serious-minded disposition. Her father had initially been a history teacher, but found himself working as a dispatcher for the railroad during the harsh economic times of the Great Depression. To make ends meet, her mother worked tirelessly at a bra and girdle factory. The Novak family lived in a challenging neighborhood, one notorious for its high crime rates, particularly for incidents of rape and murder. As a child, Kim Novak exhibited extreme shyness, so much so that she would hide behind curtains whenever visitors came to their home. Her parents, deeply concerned for her well-being, maintained a strict upbringing. Her mother insisted on keeping her in pigtails throughout her childhood and prohibited her from wearing makeup. These measures were taken to safeguard her from attracting any undesirable attention or influences. While her father fervently wished for Kim to excel as a diligent student, the young Marilyn harbored dreams that stretched beyond the confines of the classroom. She yearned to gaze out of the window and let her imagination soar. This tension between her dreams and her parents' expectations would become a recurring theme in her life. Adding to the complexity of her upbringing, the Novak family resided in a predominantly Jewish neighborhood in Chicago. Kim Novak's childhood was marked by encounters with local children who would often pick on her. She recounts instances of being knocked down, buried in snow, and even pelted with moldy deli pies. When expressing sympathy for her experiences, she surprises her interlocutor by offering a different perspective. She explains that these young, innocent Jewish kids were trying to seek a form of retribution for the tragic murders of their own kin. In a poignant revelation, she mentions that her own grandfather shared the first name Adolf, which under the circumstances could have easily been perceived as a connection to the infamous Adolf Hitler. Kim Novak's journey from her early artistic aspirations to her eventual Hollywood stardom was marked by a series of events that showcased her resilience and determination. It all began when she won two scholarships to pursue her passion for fine art at the prestigious School of the Art Institute of Chicago. This early recognition of her artistic talent was a pivotal moment in her life, setting her on a path to self-discovery and creative expression. In an effort to help Kim Novak overcome her shyness, her mother enrolled her in the Fair Teen Club, a youth group. Little did they know that this seemingly simple decision would have a profound impact on her future. The head of the club recognized something special in Kim and encouraged her to explore modeling as a means to boost her self-confidence. This encouragement would become a turning point in her life. Kim Novak's journey into the world of modeling took a significant step forward when she participated in a beauty contest and was crowned as Miss Snow Queen. Her beauty, charisma, and unique charm began to capture the attention of those around her. As fate would have it, the summer of 1953 brought an unusual opportunity. Kim, along with three other girls, embarked on a tour across the United States. Their mission? To demonstrate Thor refrigerators, a job that required them to open fridge doors and sing a catchy jingle. There's no business like Thor business. This unusual gig resulted in Kim being crowned Miss Deep Freeze, a testament to her adaptability and ability to make the most of unexpected opportunities. However, it was during a visit to RKO Studios that Kim Novak's life took a dramatic turn. She was offered the chance to work as an extra in two movies, marking her first steps into the world of film. Her undeniable presence and natural talent on screen did not go unnoticed, 
and she was soon signed up by Columbia Pictures, a studio under the leadership of the formidable Harry Cohn. While Alfred Hitchcock, known for his demanding approach to female stars, was a notable figure during her career, Kim Novak surprisingly found Hitchcock to be fine to work with. Instead, it was Harry Cohn who would become the antagonist in her Hollywood story. Cohn urged her to change her name to Kit Marlowe to make her more marketable, a request she firmly refused. In a compromise, she adopted the name Kim. The tumultuous relationship between Novak and Cohn took a particularly harsh turn when he resorted to derogatory remarks. Cohn reportedly referred to her as a dumb, fat Polak, even though she was neither Polish nor overweight. Novak recounts that he would sometimes use these derogatory terms to provoke a reaction from her. This challenging relationship with the powerful studio head was a testament to her resilience in the face of adversity. Kim Novak's Hollywood journey was not only marked by her artistic accomplishments and the challenges she faced within the industry, but also by her personal relationships, including one that drew significant attention. Rumors began to circulate that she was involved with the legendary entertainer Sammy Davis Jr. However, her relationship with Davis was met with strong opposition from Harry Cohn, the head of Columbia Pictures, who believed it would be detrimental to her career if she were to be romantically linked with a black man. In response to these rumors, Cohn took extreme measures to keep Kim Novak away from Sammy Davis Jr.'s residence, fearing that their relationship would have a negative impact on her image in a racially divided society. Kim recalls her fondness for Sammy's family, describing them as wonderful. Sammy Davis Jr. had already lost one eye in a tragic accident, and the threats from Harry Cohn escalated to a horrifying level, with Cohn allegedly warning that he would have Sammy's remaining eye removed. Kim believes that Cohn's ties to organized crime may have made such threats all too real. The complex nature of her relationship with Sammy Davis Jr., is evident as Kim Novak discusses it. She admits to loving him, but distinguishes it from being in love with him. When asked if Sammy was in love with her, she affirms that he was indeed, describing him as a big child. For Kim Novak, referring to someone as a big child is a supreme compliment. Sammy Davis Jr.'s vulnerability and his ability to remain emotionally open and genuine despite the challenges he faced resonated deeply with her. She recognizes the need to treat someone as sensitive as Sammy with utmost care and consideration. Kim Novak's reminiscences of her time working with James Stewart, one of Hollywood's most beloved leading men, provide a glimpse into the remarkable authenticity of their connection. Novak and Stewart shared the screen in two memorable films, Bell, Book, and Candle, and the iconic Vertigo. Her admiration for James Stewart is palpable. She speaks of him with genuine fondness and respect, emphasizing his unique character within the often glamorous and superficial world of Hollywood. Novak describes Stewart as someone who remained untouched by the allure of vanity and fame, even as a prominent leading man in the industry. This quality set him apart from many of his peers, as he chose to live a life guided by authenticity, rather than succumbing to the temptations of superficiality. Novak's reflection on their relationship paints a picture of camaraderie and genuine friendship. She recalls moments when, after completing a scene, they would casually remove their shoes, prop their feet up on the table, and simply hang out together. Their comfortable companionship was a testament to their shared authenticity and down-to-earth nature. In an industry where image often takes precedence over substance, their ability to remain real was a rare and cherished quality. James Stewart's unwavering authenticity in the heart of Hollywood's Beverly Hills earned him Kim Novak's deep respect. She believes that he deserves a special tribute a trophy that symbolizes his commitment to authenticity, one that simply states, I was real. Her desire for a similar recognition underscores the importance she places on staying true to oneself amid the pressures and superficiality of the entertainment industry.
Kim Novak's connection with Frank Sinatra, one of the most iconic figures in the entertainment industry, is a fascinating chapter in her life. The two stars shared the screen in two remarkable films, Pal Joey and The Man with the Golden Arm, both of which showcased their exceptional talents. When asked about her relationship with Frank Sinatra, Kim Novak is candid in her response, acknowledging that their connection went beyond a mere friendly rapport. She describes their relationship as a bit more than that and openly acknowledges having had a romantic involvement with him. Her description of Sinatra as a very sexy guy offers a glimpse into the magnetic charisma that Sinatra exuded both on and off the screen. However, her recollection of working with Sinatra also underscores the complexities of his personality. She acknowledges that he could be both kind and gentle, but also possessed a streak of cockiness, at times refusing to heed anyone's advice but his own. This duality in his behavior suggests the multifaceted nature of the legendary singer and actor. Novak's insights into Sinatra's true character reveal a deeper layer beneath the public persona. She believes that the real Frank Sinatra was a sensitive person, one who was profoundly affected by the adoration and pedestalization he experienced from his fans and the industry. This vulnerability, she implies, often led him to lose touch with his more straightforward and beautiful side. It's a reflection of the price that fame and adulation can exact on even the most genuine personalities. Kim Novak's decision to leave Hollywood, as she explains, was motivated by her desire to preserve her sense of self and not become ensnared by the trappings of fame. She was determined not to lose sight of who she truly was. Her departure from the glitz and glamour of the entertainment industry was, in her eyes, a means of self-preservation. Kim Novak's Hollywood career, though dazzling and impactful, had a relatively short lifespan, spanning just a decade. By 1966, she had reached a pivotal crossroads in her life and career. A brief marriage to English actor Richard Johnson, whom she had met on the set of The Amorous Adventures of Maul Flanders, had come to an end after less than a year. This period marked a turning point as she decided to step away from the world of movies. Kim Novak's decision to leave Hollywood was influenced by multiple factors. She had grappled with depression since her teenage years, a personal battle that she had fought silently. The fluctuations in her mental well-being weighed heavily on her, with moments of happiness soaring to heights beyond visibility, only to be followed by the descent into the depths of the proverbial hole. The unpredictability of her emotional state was a constant source of concern and fear for her. Furthermore, the roles and opportunities that were coming her way in the 1960s no longer aligned with her artistic aspirations. The era marked a significant shift in Hollywood, and her previous association with Harry Cohn, who had passed away in 1958, was no longer influential in shaping her career. Instead, she found herself primarily offered parts that reduced her to a scantily clad beach babe, roles that held little appeal for her. Kim Novak's desire to be appreciated for her true self and the depth of her artistic abilities became a driving force behind her decision to leave Hollywood. She longed to express herself authentically to portray characters that resonated with her own experiences and emotions. One particular aspiration she held close was the opportunity to play the role of someone struggling with mental illness. Her deep personal understanding of these emotions led her to believe that she could deliver a profound and authentic performance. The signs that Kim Novak's Hollywood career had reached its conclusion extended beyond her professional sphere and seeped into her personal life. Her decision to leave the industry was marked by a series of events and realizations that underscored the need for a fresh start and a departure from the California coast, where she had been residing in Big Sur. The first significant event that foreshadowed her departure was a devastating fire that engulfed her home, resulting in the loss of most of her valuable possessions. Despite this setback, she chose to remain resilient and rebuild. However, the forces of nature were not done testing her resolve. 
A mudslide soon followed, taking away her newly reconstructed home. It was at this point that Kim Novak recognized the universe's message to her. It was time to pack up and move on. She recounts her decision to rent a van and take with her only what she deemed truly important. Her photographs, art supplies, and artistic materials took precedence, emphasizing her commitment to her artistic pursuits. The mudslide in her eyes was a clear sign that her time in Big Sur had come to an end. It was a wake-up call to embrace change, to seize the opportunity while she could, and to avoid waiting until age and time rendered her obsolete in the eyes of Hollywood. Kim Novak's journey took her to the serene Pacific coast of Oregon, where she encountered Bob Malloy. Their meeting eventually blossomed into a marriage in 1976. With Malloy, she discovered a new life, one filled with purpose and contentment. Her role shifted from Hollywood star to an assistant in her husband's veterinary work. She reveled in the hands-on involvement, even assisting him during surgeries, which she found fulfilling and meaningful. In this phase of her life, the focus shifted away from acting, and her priorities evolved. She immersed herself in her art, explored poetry, embraced the joy of horseback riding, and reveled in the beauty of nature. The bustling world of entertainment no longer held its allure for her, and whenever she occasionally returned to TV or film, it served as a stark reminder of why she had chosen to leave it behind. Kim Novak's relationships with animals, particularly her shared bond with her husband Bob Malloy, occupied a central place in her heart. She spoke fondly of these connections, describing the animals as her children. Her deep, nurturing instincts, which she equated to mothering, found expression in her care and love for animals. When asked about whether she had ever wanted children of her own, she responded with candor, admitting that she had not pursued motherhood. Her reluctance stemmed from a fear that her offspring might inherit the mental health issues that had plagued her life, a desire to spare them from such suffering. Kim Novak's journey with mental health took a significant turn in the early 2000s when she received a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Rather than keeping her diagnosis a secret, she chose to become an advocate for mental health awareness and sought to destigmatize the condition. In her efforts to normalize bipolar disorder, she shared her experience openly, emphasizing that it is just another illness that can be effectively treated in her case with antipsychotic medications. Kim Novak's journey with medication was not without its challenges. While she acknowledged the benefits of some medications in managing her condition, she expressed a reluctance to take lithium due to its side effect of weight gain. She humorously remarked that she didn't want anything that would cause her to gain a significant amount of weight, not only for her own well-being, but also because her beloved horse wouldn't appreciate it. Her candor about the impact of medication on her physical appearance and her determination to prioritize her health and happiness offers insight into her character. When questioned about her weight, Novak playfully deflected the question, suggesting that some things should remain a mystery, a testament to her privacy regarding certain aspects of her life. One of the most profound connections in Kim Novak's life has been the synergy between her art and her bipolar disorder. She revealed that her art has played a therapeutic role in her journey with bipolar disorder. Painting became an outlet for her emotions, allowing her to release feelings of rage and depression. Through her art, she found a means of channeling her inner turmoil and transforming it into a creative and cathartic process. This creative expression provided a positive outlet for the intense emotions that often accompany bipolar disorder. In terms of her physical appearance, Kim Novak became a subject of public attention and scrutiny in 2014 when Donald Trump took to Twitter to comment on her appearance after she presented an award at the Oscars. She openly acknowledged that she had sought a medical procedure involving fat injections in her face in an attempt to address her insecurities. Her decision to undergo this procedure stemmed from a moment of insecurity where she believed that someone could help improve her appearance. 
However, she later regretted the decision as it altered her facial features and contributed to her feeling that her face appeared too round. What do you think about Kim Novak's life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.